All right, party people, we're back here once again. WCW Monday Night Nitro. We got some more people hired there. Back once again on the Paramount Network and the WCW Network here. Auto booked that. Yeah, let's go backstage, see what's going on. Thomas Billington left the locker room when a silly game he created quickly became very popular. I like to think that he just figured out what hopscotch was and was like, hey, guys, check this out. So, check it. Check it. So... Let's go by here. Uh, do you want to keep going to the mid south and southeast? Keep it to our uh, our fans there. Or do you want yeah, to I think so. I, I think so. At least till we get big enough. Yeah, let's go mid south, and uh, yeah, we'll we'll do one where we go to like Canada or something crazy, right? So, let's get to uh to booking party people. All right, party people, we are here, ready for Monday Night Nitro, kicking it off for you guys here. We got Eric Bischoff catches Vincent backstage. What the heck's up with Vincent backstage? He's actually underperformed. I'm very sad. And the segment went on far too long for this audience, which is also very sad for me, too, because I thought you guys would very much enjoy this. Apparently, apparently Monday Night Nitro did not. So, But we got Vincent backstage. He's, he got caught. Bischoff found him backstage. He's like, look, first it was you know showing up at the pay-per-view then it was nitro last week then it was thunder i saw you were backstage with the dogs dog mm. city and whatnot but this week now you're out here trying to like clean the wrestlers boots he's like no 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 man you got it wrong you got it wrong he's like i'm not cleaning just anybody's boots i'm cleaning my nephew's boots so then out comes al jones aj the nephew of mr Vincent Jones, he's like, this is my nephew. He's like, you guys hired him. And Eric's like, what are you talking about? He's like, you hired him to be a wrestler. And Al Jones is like nodding his head. He's like, what the heck? He's like, who's calling the shots around here? I thought I was. So he's getting all mad that now Al Jones is a part of the roster. And Vincent's got to stick around a little bit longer because his nephew's working. So he's backstage. After that, we got Scott, Scott Norton here. He says, ladies and gentlemen, you might have saw on Thunder, we had a young, hot shot of a talent. And he impressed me. I said I'd give him a little television title shot tonight. But he's not going to be any chance for me. You guys know that. Scott Norton, big old powerbomb, able to defeat Mr. Alexander Hammerstone. Says this was defense number one of the television title. There we go. Next up, we got the perfect strangers defeating the Los Parks when Brian Pillman Jr. defeats El Hijo de la Park with the Tornado DDT. Pretty good there. Pretty impressive right off the bat. And then we have uh, Angel Rose and MJ Jenkins. MJ Jenkins says that she'll be watching Angel Rose's every step, uh, you know, doing her research on her as she's wrestling tonight. Um, preparing for their big match later down the road at WCW Sold Out. Ninja Rose able to get the win against Deanna Perrazzo, Swanton Bomb. Big favorite of that one right there. There we go. Then we have Carly Colon out here with Orlando Colon, Eddie Colon. He's got his boys with him. I think one of them is actually his brother, and the other one's his cousin. Yeah, well, I, I forget what. I, th I think it's Epico, the brother. I think Eddie is, right? I mean, they look Perfect. a lot more alike. But... Well, well, but you gotta also remember, Primo's the brother. Yeah. It's whoever pre, whoever was Primo. So, you know, he's saying that he's now a part of the WCW roster, and he's got his family with him, and he's gonna be taking on the WCW World Heavyweight Champion tonight, and he knows he's no match for him. Well, guess what? By the way, Joe Hennig didn't do well without a script, so I'm sorry. By the way, scripts, uh, unscripted's turned on by default, so I just have a lot more faith in wrestlers now. So I guess I just shouldn't. So. Um, a little brawl out there. Joe Hennig able to defeat Carly Cologne with the Hennig Plex. Pretty good there. Then after that, we have Sean Waltman catches up backstage and he finds Cash Wheeler. He's like, hey, 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 man, hey, man. He's like, hey, I wanted to welcome you to WCW, but you got to talk to your friend. Casey's out of control, dude. He's running around here. He's got the Confederate flag on the back of his truck. He's got the Von Erich boys with him. And look, he's giving a bad name to those boys. And they already got their last name. We know that's not good for them. But trust me, all right? They need someone like you, Cash. They need someone that can influence them in a good way, not KC. And Cash gets offended there that he's talking poorly about you know, his friend. 
He's like, hey, dude. He's like, I don't like you talking about KC that way. He's like, me and him, we got some different views, but I don't think you should be dogging on him. I don't think you should be doing all that stuff on him. Sean's like, you got to keep an eye. He's like, because just by talking to me, he's like, you're going to be a target. And Cash is like, trust me, I don't have to worry about that. Following that main event, though, Sean Waltman taking on KC McKnight. KC able to get the best of Sean Waltman, uh, getting the leg hook side of suplex there. Pretty good. Another match that had no right to be as good as it was, but I'm glad it did because it was the main event. And then finishing strong, we have the Vaughn Ericks coming out, beating the crap out of uh, Mr. Waltman when Joe Hennig comes out there for the save. Uh, but sadly, they're still outnumbered. And Casey McKnight and the Vaughn Ericks stand tall over the WCW World Champion and Sean Waltman. So that was our WCW Monday Nitro there. And then we're going to kick it up and show you guys uh, some thunder. How about that, everybody? All right, we are here. Back for another WCW Thunder, my friend. Backstage incident right off the bat. We got Rick Steiner out there with his dogs hard on drugs. Uh, <laughs> oh, no. It's begun. It's begun. Just find them. Just, just, get, just get some money. Just find them. Rick Steiner's very happy that we find them. Um, let's go. Uh, how about the Great Lakes? Let's try that out for tonight. So Valley Field sounds pretty good. Well, that was uh, that wasn't really good though with the Rick Steiner doing, doing drugs. So, all right. Let's see, what we got here for some thunder. All right. <laughs> Well, this is what we call an episode takeover. <laughs> I'm here for some WCW Thunder. I'm scared. So, Let's go. It's about to get real fun here. We kick off the show here tonight with uh, Vincent walking into the arena with his good old nephew, Al. They walk on into it, and Eric Bischoff says, Vincent, 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 I told you week after week after week. We have nothing for you. You can continue your little odd jobs. You are more than welcome on the outside premise. But we do want to actually, you can continue to show up as long as you'll bring Al. Because Al is officially going to be debuting on the WCW roster next week on Thunder. And he will have a match against a mystery opponent. Oh, I get a surprise. Then, in about, we got some decent wrestling, good heat. We got Matt Marquis. He defeats Mike Bennett with the director's cut. Mike Bennett was a little bit distracted because Raven and Kevin Condren were out at ringside watching, being getting very, very close to the action, and they would end up beating down Mike Bennett post-match as... Condren would throw him over his shoulder and they would carry him out of the arena. By the way, it said there needed to be a little bit more star power in the segment in order to successfully have Kevin Condren fight for that long. How long did I have him fight for? Five minutes. Five minutes, everybody. So, growing pains sometimes. <laughs> Let's go. In, the, in this segment, we have Summer Rae and Tanara. They're just talking backstage. Summer Rae's like, it's all about how you look in this business. No one really cares what you do between those ropes. Tanara says, I beg to differ. And next week, I'm going to hand your arm to you and show you why I believe otherwise. I've never heard that expression before, Chris. Hand your arm to you. <laughs> This wasn't bad, actually, for Brian this, Myers as a road agent. I was going to say, this is Eric Bischoff coming out here saying, I've heard, I've seen the tweets, I know what you guys want. You guys want the old feel of WCW, and you know what? I can bring that to you. I will be rebooting the cruiserweight division, and we will get now be called the light heavyweights, because you know what? We ain't about cruising. We're about showcasing just good old fashioned wrestling. <laughs> I like it. I like it, buddy. I like it. And in this match, we had Brian Myers defeat Elio Della, L.A. Park, 
We had Rockstar Spud in there. We had Leo Rush. We had Kota Sekafuda. I think that's his name. Yeah, all right. <laughs> I don't know. We had Ricky Mandel in there as well. Brian Myers. Pin Kota with the Taste of Pain. Kota was the weak link there, so we uh, might uh, ha- have found uh, who might not be able to uh, keep be up. Featured featured in this cruiserweight division this this was a good gauge on who could hang and who can't and he might be the guy who cannot hmm. his gimmick was great however leo rush's gimmick was awful sadly there here's my favorite segment <laughs> the weekly tino sabatelli tino is on the screen he's got his arm in a sling he's sitting there talking about great things in the history of professional wrestling he says another great thing is going to be when he returns to the ring he says he is currently at 43.6 percent health right now as he continues his journey on his way back to recovery to grace us with his presence in world championship wrestling tino dude tino that's my dude all right and then we got the main event. We got the Von Erics taking on the Colognes. The Von Erics once again defend their WCW tag titles against the Colognes. And they will defense number that, that, that is defense number one for them. And they will walk away with the win here in the main event of WCW Thunder. Post match, we have Cash Wheeler come out to check on the Von Erics tell them that they will get them that he does not like their tactics. He doesn't like that they are have latched themselves to Casey McKnight and he will show them that they are taking the wrong route here. Uh oh. Maybe they did a couple flips. Maybe it angered him. He said only fist boys. Only fist. And that's our show. Not too bad. Not too bad. Getting better and better every time, guys. That's going to do it here, though. And next time, we'll see you guys for some more Nitro. Keep it safe, everybody. Peace out.